so you think you wouldn't arrest Gabriel Wrench, the water boy, co-host, cross politics, founder of the Fight Laugh Feast channel, singer of psalms, maker of men. <laughs> he is a father. I guess you can say makers. <laughs> You think that if you were a police officer given the order to enforce the tyrannical ordinances, the tyrannical laws of the mayor, if you were given those orders, you think you'd resist? Let's talk about that. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show with a friend, tagging people, commenting. I love it all. I appreciate all of you guys. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to flfnetwork.com, put an HGBT in the memo field, get a mug, support us as we were getting thrown in jail, support us as we were proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life, and you'll get to live stream our conference that's sold out. I mean, you can't get tickets anymore. You can't get tickets anymore. I'm going to miss you guys that can't go, and I'm going to love to see you guys smoking the cigars, drinking the scotch, celebrating what the Lord is doing, praising God for the opportunities that he is giving us. I, I've been telling you more and more, and we're starting to see why, that this conference is going to be pivotal. It's going to be pivotal. For those of you who are going to be there, it's going to be a blessing. And for those of you who can't make it there, hey, you can live stream it. Go become a member. Support us as we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. Isn't it not becoming clearer every day that we need organizations like the Fight, Laugh, Feast channel, like the network, to be here to be able to support to proclaim oh i just realized my son's sippy cup is right there that's his water i'm just gonna leave it right there why not uh if you can email me man at how to build 10.com find me on all the social media sites how to build a 10 thank you guys last couple shows blown up and uh just been really great really appreciate it all right so you think that you would stand up against the tyrannical orders and ordinances of the city, the state, wherever it is, and you would not arrest Gabe, Gabriel Wrench, the water boy, the maker of men and women. He has some daughters. So but for, for some of you who maybe haven't heard what happened, I, I'm sure a lot of people did. I mean, it kind of blew up. They went like cross politic guys went live. There's tons of videos out there and they're beautiful. The videos are beautiful. There are people being arrested <laughs> for being Christians and the doxology is in the background with a crowd raising their hands. It made me teary eyed as Toby Sumter says also on the cross politic show and the fight, laugh, feast network. God tells the best stories and <laughs> does he ever. It's such a beautiful thing. So what happened is the church, their church in Moscow, Idaho, who has allowed the protest of the black lives matter, allowed the protest of the people that want to tear down the, institutions that they're protecting um that the institutions are protecting these people that want to tear down their institutions it's absolutely amazing so the church in protest decided to get together and sing psalms and they had uh, a few songs and they had like three four hundred people i think it was like maybe two three hundred i don't know don't remember exact counts and threatened to find anyone who did not stay within six feet or that did that was within six feet of other people and didn't wear a mask. None of them wore masks. And they heard about this the day before on Facebook, I think. And the city went out and they put circles and they indicated this is where you need to stand or you're going to get fined. It turns out Gabe and two others were detained. Two of them, I believe, were arrested. Gabe was not charged. So I think that's just technically a detention, not an arrest. But uh, And then I believe there were some other fines I saw on Facebook. But Again, if you have not seen the videos, I absolutely encourage you to go see them. It is absolutely beautiful. Their textbook on how you should be um, challenging the police in a respectful way. I mean, you notice, like, especially Gabe, I love it. He wasn't aggressive. He wasn't threatening, but he was calling them out. He was calling them out on their enforcement of what at what point do you police officer not enforce a tyrannical law, a tyrannical order? What is that time? When is that order happen? Where is that red line that you are not going to cross? And every single police officer, every single person in law enforcement, every single person that wields the sword of the government better be asking themselves that question, better be preparing themselves because you're going to have to answer it sooner than you think. 
evidenced by this. I also saw another story where this lady drove an hour and a half to see her uh, son or somebody, I believe it was her son, somebody on the bench. She couldn't wear a mask because she has asthma. The police officer tased her, which, you know, it doesn't help the asthma. And because it was on the aluminum bleacher seats, the electrocution went to the kid next to her as well. Not, the, I mean, not electrocution. Like, they didn't die, but it's taser. It's electrical, right? And we're seeing this all over. And yet, somehow, the rioters of Black Lives Matter can go roam free. They can protest. They don't have to wear masks. Is this the country you want to live in? And you say no. And you'd say, no, I wouldn't do this. But let me just give you a little framework. Let me give you some context of a police officer. A police officer, on average, makes about $60,000 a year. That's not much. That's not much at all. $60,000. If they can make it to the end of their career, 20 years, 25 years, they'll get a nice pension. And it is actually a really nice benefit of a police officer. If you don't obey an order, wait, before we even go there, you have $60,000. You most likely have a family. You probably have a few kids. And $60,000 is not that much money to raise a family. $60,000 is not much at all. And if you disobey an order, if you are found to be insubordinate, you're not just jeopardizing your career. You are jeopardizing your family. How are you going to feed your family? How are you going to be able to um, provide for them? Do you think it's easy to find a job as a police officer that's been fired? What profession could they go into? Where could they go to replace that income? And depending on how long they've been on the force, they're going to throw away their pension. So when someone says, go do X, go do unlawful X, go do unlawful, tyrannical order, enforce this ordinance, and you say, just don't do it, dude. Just don't do it. You have to understand what is behind that decision. I'm not justifying it. I don't think that they should have arrested people like Gabe. I don't think they should have tased a woman on the bleachers. But we need to understand it because we need to understand our own situation. And it's not going to be easy for us either to disobey. We are going to need our law enforcement. We are going to need our military to stand up and say, no, I will not enforce these unlawful orders anymore. That's going to have to happen. But it's also going to have to happen with you. And it's also going to have to happen with me. And you need to understand that you are calling people to risk you're calling people to throw up and put up on the table f at risk, to call the bluff, to call the person raising the stakes and saying, hey, if I don't arrest you, even though I know it's wrong to arrest you, my family's going to be put to risk. I'm going to lose the ability to provide for my two daughters or my son and my daughter to my wife. I am going to have to go home to them and say, I got fired because I didn't arrest Gabe because he was singing psalms. And that was wrong. That was tyrannical. Now, what happens to that police officer? Do you think police officers are you know, respected right now? Do you think that it's easy or hard to find a job that you can transfer your skills to that people are going to be willingly wanting to hire you? What do you have? Security? That doesn't pay 60000 a year for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's some that will. What are you going to do? Now, let me ask you. What decisions are you willing to risk your family, your career, and your job for? If you were told to fire an employee that did what Gabe did, if you were told to let them go, or your job is on the line, would you do it? If you were told that you couldn't read your Bible, something far less at work anymore, that you couldn't talk about Jesus Christ, or you'd get fired. Would you do it? You see, we don't have to escalate the situation to where it was with Gabe. But what are the battles that you're not fighting because you're scared of not getting that promotion? You're scared of losing your job. You're scared of coming home and not being able to provide for your family anymore. 
See, this is becoming the reality for us. And I don't know if a lot of us would do any different than the police officer that arrested Gabe because it's not just that situation. There is context. There is weightiness behind this. And it's easy for us to say that officer should not have enforced that unlawful tyrannical order, that unlawful tyrannical ordinance. It would have been easy for us to say that, but it wouldn't be easy for us to do it. And I know that because we, you and me, I've done it too, have compromised and we have done things that we shouldn't have done because we were scared of the ramifications. You can hear my son crying about it. He's devastated by it. He actually wants to come in and be here. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him or not, but I'm assuming you can because I can hear him. It's becoming really evident really quickly that we are going to decide, do we hate our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, our sons, our wives, our own lives? Do we hate them m more? Do we put them in higher esteem or lower the esteem and then to doing what is right and standing up for Jesus. Do we hate our own lives? Will we take up our cross and put to death the cross, a vehicle, a tool for execution? Will we take our cross up and kill ourselves for doing what is right, for standing up for the kingdom, for worshiping our God and saying, no, we're going to meet at church. We're going to protest these unlawful acts. We are going to resist your tyrannical laws. We're going to resist your unlawful orders against the Constitution. It's, it's going to come to this, guys. And we need to resolve in ourselves that there is nothing more dear to us than Jesus himself. And when we are called to make a stand and sing the Psalms, when we are called to stand and go out and not be conditioned, not be told how we are going to worship by people that have no right and no authority to do it, what are we going to do? And you might just say, it's just social distancing. It's just the mask. It's not just those things. Because the rioters were able to do it. The rioters were able to get together. And even if they weren't, we have an obligation to worship God. We have an obligation to do it. And we better start resolving in ourselves because there are going to be leaders. There are going to be our bosses. There are going to be people in the heads of organizations, council, government, state <laughs> judges, legislators. They're going to ask us to do things that are wrong. And if we don't comply, we're going to lose everything. Now, I don't think it's going to be that extreme in every situation, but that's the, that's the potential. And are you willing to do it for what's right? Are you willing to do it to obey God? Are you willing to do it to be faithful? I don't know if we can answer that question until it happens, and but I pray for us that we can. I pray that we will have courage like Gabe did. I pray that we will be found faithful. Remember, we have a courageous heritage that we must live up to, where our brothers and sisters before us were dipped and waxed and burned like candles, that were fed to the lions, our Lord and Savior crucified, beaten beyond the recognition of a man. We have a heritage of faithfulness and courage in our family, our Christian family, and we must live up to it. I hope it doesn't come to this. I hope that we can rally together and cause such a resistance that no one can touch us, that these laws cannot be enforced, these ordinances can't be enforced. But it's not going to happen unless we rally together. And it's probably not going to happen with more of these incidents happening. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to be tasered? Are you prepared to be arrested? It's happening. It's not far-fetched. I pray for you guys. Have a good weekend. Be faithful. Be courageous. Be praying. Get sin out of your lives. If you have sin in your lives, you are not going to be able to fight. You are going to be compromised. So pray for repentance. Pray for God to search us all. 
for us to be filled with the Spirit and bold that we may stand the day of trial. And we'll talk to you next time.